Welcome back to Seed Time, everybody. Brian Pierce here. We're doing another interview. This time we actually have quite the mega awesome superstar in the motocross world, Mr. Will Hahn. William is a transplant to Texas racing uh, for the Geico Honda team on his 250F. With Mr. Will, how is your evening going, kind sir? It's been going good. I uh, just uh, got back from a little bit of training and just hanging out at the moment. Awesome. And you're in Cali right now, right? After we're shoe, you did not come back to Texas? Yeah, I've been out here most of the year and just uh, staying out here. The team makes it easy, and then my trainer's here also, so it uh, it just makes uh, makes life easy. Oh, man, I bet that makes it a lot easier. So do you get a lot of time with the team there in California, or is that yeah. just, okay, so it's more centralized for the team? Yeah, I think in, in a way, and then I, I end up being able to test stuff when I need to, and and also just my mechanic being so close, I man. I just pick my bike up, go ride, drop it off when I'm done. Like he just makes my life real simple. Awesome. Well, that's. I can imagine that that does make it a lot easier when you just kind of come in right there next to uh, all your team members and all your your mates in yeah. that sense. So it was Shugle this past weekend. Looking at pictures, watching the races, everything. I just want to know a bit of your perspective on how the track was, because it looked phenomenal. It turned. It seemed that it got really rough. Um, throughout the day, but you know you got a fifth and a tenth, so good, good, really good Moto One. You know, decent Moto Two. We all know kind of you had a wreck and stuff, but kind of take us through what you thought of the track and how the day went. Uh, I think uh, you know the track does look deceiving. It looks really awesome, and and granted, it was really good this year. Uh, I thought the track was was taken care of real well. We got there and it was just uh, you know. Uh, it rained a little bit, I think, on Friday. So for it being more shoe and everything, the dirt was it was really, really good. Uh, the ruts ended up being pretty well, and like you said, it got rough. Um, my second moto, no, wasn't my best uh, performance, but my first moto was really good, and I'm inching closer to those front runners. So uh, I'm just happy to move forward with that. Yeah, dude. I think what you just said, you're inching closer to the front runners. That has definitely been the case. Um, you've kind of you a bit up and down through the beginning bits of the year. We've got four, you know, main, you know, four races left in the season. But you know, you have been putting in those top, top six, top seven place contingencies. What is it going to take? What are you guys working on? Where are you going to break through the top five more consistently? Uh, just a little bit more speed and obviously starts. If you don't start with them, you have no, you, you know, there's no bringing that, that distance back in. So right now it's just the starts and, and getting my speed just a little bit more. In the starts, when you when you don't start with them, I mean, is it literally like, holy crap, if you're in the pack for three turns, by the time you even get in front of it, are they just it's completely like out of sight? I mean, is it that just bad or that fast, I mean? It, it is. It really is. You know, there's been races where I've started in like ninth and got myself into six, and then by the time I got into six, they're they're long gone. That's, yeah, that's insane. I I race, you know, off road, um, and that that happens. You know, there's all kinds of stuff where you get, but it's uh, you know, going to Freestone this year and having been to Supercrosses and stuff like that, watching you guys ride, absolutely phenomenal, unbelievable how fast you guys go at Freestone this year. I thought, I mean, that was the fastest I'd ever seen. In any any of you guys ride, it's just I mean the twelve pack like, whoa, that's just crazy. Yeah, I, and, and it was you know and it's and it's it's cool it's cool that it's evolving to what it is. Yeah, um, do you think that have you noticed as a rider um, the the money that's coming into the sport with Red Bull and Monster and all the the big backing kind of out of industry sponsors that are starting to come in. You know how is that? How is that affecting the sport? How is that affect, or is it affecting you personally? Um, and do you think it's taken the sport, you know, to a better place? I think so, absolutely. I mean, uh, our team is branded really well with Geico and and Muscle Milk and all that. And you know, without those guys and and all the, the support and money they put in, it, it's got to help more than anything, you know. And and there's going to be more of that. And I think that the more that they prove that it's successful for them to come in and get the uh, the advertisement that they look for and all that, the more outside sponsors that will see that and uh, and also appreciate it, maybe more that will come in and put more money in. I like it. Man, sounds like you got a BS in, uh, in advertising or something. You know exactly what's going on. There we go. Yeah, I like it. Maybe you've got a career after the fact. Um, okay. So, yeah. Looks like the Geico Honda team is going to have a five-person team for 2013 uh, with Zach Osborne grabbing, you know, grabbing a spot with you guys and Zach Bell coming in. Is that, you know, that's what I've read on the internet. I don't know anybody in the industry. I mean, is that what it looks like with you on the team for next year? 
that's what it's looking like at the moment. And I think we're going to be a, a pretty strong powerhouse. I think it's going to be a very strong powerhouse. Now, traditionally, though, you look at the Geico Honda team and then you look at, say, the Pro Circuit team, which you that's kind of where you guys always get you know netted out against each other. You know, you guys are going to have five riders, and maybe they're going to have five riders. We don't know. I mean, you guys, I guess it's stepping it up. Do you guys see Zach Bell as just kind of coming in um, as a youngling where you all going to teach him a lot? Or is he, are you guys really just bringing five people to the table, like, to just take it on? I mean, just bring the series home. Well, I think like anything, his first year in Supercross, he's going to have to, you're going to have to learn a little bit. But, you know, the reason he got hired is because he's a good rider, and he'll prove that, I think, when, when he, uh, when he hits the supercross track, you know. Um, but like I said, with any time you're being a rookie and all that, there's going to be times where you're going to learn. You're going to wish you didn't make that mistake. But uh, it's going to be fine. That's why he got hired. He's on a good bike, and he'll be fine. Good. Well, man, yeah, I'm excited to see it. we got Loretta Lynn's coming up. Uh, anything any, anything from your past with your Loretta Lynn days or any of that stuff that uh, that, that comes to memory when you talk, when you think about all that? Uh you know, a lot of a lot more pressure I put on myself than I ever should have. Uh, and in those in those not, days, yeah, I regret not enjoying it a little bit more and not being so worried about getting a ride and you know not just letting everything work out the way it, it did and, and just be relaxed and have fun with it because uh, you know that's all I thought about was a ride and having to win and having to do this to do that and uh, you know I wish I would have enjoyed it a little bit more. Huh. Well, hopefully some of that advice can go to the young riders that are that are. Uh, you know, heading that way, getting ready for the week to start next week because it's going to be hectic for them, and probably their dads are going to be pointing the finger yeah. and asking asking for some wins. One of the things too that we've seen with the uh, the Geico team in, this year is the new Alliance gear. A lot of people, when is that stuff going to be available online? Do you have any? Okay, so one, how comfortable is that stuff? Is it great gear? Is it awesome gear? Is it decent gear? And then, what have you heard about when is it going to come out, and when are people going to be able to buy it? Uh, I, I believe it's coming out in November, and it, you know it's great gear. They've proved that uh, with just uh, the new stuff they've come out with for outdoors and stuff is all vented and it's really light, fits great, and, and all the above. You know they've just proved to be a really good gear company, and, and, it, and it looks really cool. So um, I think sometime mid November they will have it to the public. Okay, get some two thir- two thirteen out there. Is yeah. a is Elias or a, a, are they owned? by anybody that was in the industry or has been in the industry for a long I don't even know who they're actually if they're associated with anybody or who owns them or anything like that or yeah, do you as know as far as I know that it used to be the owner of, uh, of No Fear um, okay and uh, you know he does a does a great job with all of it and um, I'm pretty sure that's uh, the official owner of it I, I, as far as I know so um, interesting and, uh, yeah it you know, we heard a lot from Novier for a long time, and then they kind of started to dwindle out. So maybe partnerships went down. People had to make some new decisions. Whatever it is, it looks sick. I, you know, I know when you guys debuted it, it was like, "What is that stuff?" And it almost seemed like I want. I don't want to say a better looking Fox gear because Fox is good looking gear. There's a lot of good looking gears out there, but it really did kind of stand on its own. It really was like, "What is that stuff?" Um, and so you guys have looked great and. I'm I'm looking forward to seeing it uh, in the store so more people can purchase it. Yeah, me too. Me too. Two weeks off. What the hell are you gonna be doing? Come on. Uh man, I just uh, I kind of stick to the same program. I think I'm gonna take the weekend and go up north uh, to some friends' house, and, and that's about it. You know, I'm gonna ride some more this week and and keep training, and I just keep keep going and keep on the routine and keep enjoying that so uh, nothing crazy just uh, maybe take a couple days off regroup a little bit and then get back to it nice well yeah it's definitely not as exciting as i would have liked to hear but that's okay you know what some people have to be professional and (laughs) since since it's not eight eight or five or in between right now i don't need to be professional and that's why i'm having a pint full of awesome with my beer koozie right now so that's what's happening (laughs) So, all right, craziest story ever. Uh, you mo- you just met the most random girl of your entire life. That happened sometime in your past history, I know. Tell us about the story. Come on. You know, I don't, I don't have anything that exciting, unfortunately. Nothing. Come on, you're a funnier guy than that. I've listened to you on all the radio shows. You've got the good stories. <laughs> Man, I don't... I mean, you're not just know. goofy looking. I leave that to myself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Um... <laughs> uh, Nothing, nothing too like exciting, and crazy. You'd be surprised. It's not that exciting. 
Well, I know you guys have to take it serious with all your training and stuff like that, so you probably have to reel in some of those Saturday nights, cut it off at midnight. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta cut it off early. I gotta start hydrating, kids. I gotta be at the track. So, yeah. all right. Well, cool. Is there anything else that you want to tell us? Talk about random, you know, whatever. I like a good time. Yeah, so do I. I mean, uh, nothing really, nothing really crazy. I mean, I just appreciate you know doing shows like this and, and uh, just keeping going with everything. It's cool to do a Texas-based one, and we're obviously where I'm based out of, and everybody is, you know, my family's there and everything like that. So that part of it's always really fun. Cool. Well. You know, there's not a ton of people in the bigger industries that know about what we do at Seat Time, and a, a lot of where we started was doing um, an internet-based kind of, you know, video cast. Um, so we sit down on the couch that I'm on now, kind of have a few adult beverages, you know, we're all of age, uh, the ones that drank anyway, and we talk about a lot of the moto news that goes on, more like beer drinking and bench racing for guys that wish they could be professionals but probably couldn't put up with the lifestyle. Um, so, but the thing is, is we like to travel with our couch. So uh, next time you're back in Texas, if you might happen to want to do any kind of episode of Seat Time, I'm just saying, it's probably going to happen. I could drive down to wherever you would be. That's just an That'd offer. Great. I'm just, it's just an offer. Maybe you, your brother, Andrew Short, throw down some, uh, some Hawaiian punch and some high fives and see what happens. That sounds great. That sounds awesome. awesome. Well, we're going to be in contact you got to remember, this is Seat Time, our website where you can find more interviews like this and all the web shows that we do is SeatTime.co. That's our URL. We're on Facebook, Facebook.com slash SeatTime, and on Twitter, Twitter.com slash SeatTime underscore CEO. Don't forget FlyRacing.com. Please go check them out. Just came out with their 2013 gear. We appreciate all their sponsorships of Seat Time and the awesomeness they bring. Mr. Han, where can people find you on these internets? Also on Twitter at uh, Wilhelm58, and uh, also on Facebook at Wilhelm58 as well. Man, that's pretty simple, wasn't it, kids? You're not going to screw that one up. I sure hope not. Mr. Will, I appreciate your time. Wilbur, have a good night. Keep training hard, and we're looking forward to getting you the, those top fives. I know that when you get it, the next one, you'll be like, it's because I was on seat time, bitches. That's what's happening. That's perfect. That's exactly what we'll be like. Yeah, minus the bitches. But you could say it. I'll, I'll be okay with it. I could let you use the name. <laughs> perfect. Let's do it. Just for the weekend. All right, man. Really appreciate it, dude. Thanks for the time. I'm going to talk to you for a second. We're going to call the show off. Peace. <laughs>